Well, hello, beautiful people. I'm Anthony from EncouragedToday.com. We're so glad you stopped in for a shot of hope. This platform was designed for one purpose in mind, and that's to encourage you that we would have some resources available that would put courage in you. We would extend hope to you. Life's hard sometimes, man. We have our bumps and bruises that we deal with. So we wanted to create a sense of community that you could come in, have a little pit stop, get yourself a shot of hope through an encouraging word, uh, an encouraging song. We have different topics we're gonna to be dealing with. Uh, health, nutrition, fitness, cooking, and uh, we'll be using art and photography to encourage as well, not just the verbal encouragement, but God's a creative God, and we want to use these resources as well. And right now, we'd like to share with you a resource uh, that I'm quite, uh, quite excited about. We're calling it an encouraging conversation, and our first one is with Glenn Kaiser. If you're not familiar with Glenn, he's a pastor at Jesus People USA in inner city Chicago, world-class blues guitarist, man. Uh, Glenn has produced, recorded over 35 albums. If you enjoy the music of Reverend Gary Davis, that 20s, 30s, uh, acoustic, dobro, harmonica, gospel blues, you would love a project he did with Daryl Mansfield, Trimmed and Burning. Perhaps you like the electric blues a little bit more, a la cream. The Glenn Kaiser Band has several projects out that you would really enjoy. And Glenn has a couple of beautiful acoustic worship projects out as well. Without further ado, this is an encouraging conversation with Glenn Kaiser. Glenn, I just read your most uh, recent blog. And for our listeners, if you're looking for the written word to encourage you uh, with thought, and sincerity. You want to, you're going to want to check out Glenn's blog, glennkaiser.com or wordpress.com. And uh, your most recent one a couple of days ago, Glenn, dealt with quote unquote the new norm. I uh, love the way you ended it, my brother. May you depend on him and move as the Spirit and his word encourage you in growth and in faithfulness. What's the word encourage, Glenn, mean to you? Well, I immediately go to uh, Barnabas, uh, son of consolation or son of encouragement. Um, apparently, Barnabas had a an openness to obviously a desire to obey and love Jesus, but there was a deeper sense of compassion for people. And of course, you remember the argument that that ensued between Paul and Barnabas about bringing John Mark along on a missionary journey. So. Um, However you want to, that's a whole different discussion and a deep theological discussion to exegete those scriptures. But the punchline is, is that Barnabas had such an open heart and such a gracious attitude toward people. And I think Christians sometimes are, we want to hear teaching and we want to give teaching and we want to read books on grace but the very word means unmerited, unearned favor. And that's the way God deals with us. I mean, he certainly calls us uh, out at times and judges us and will judge. Sure. But, but the, the, if, uh, here's the way I said it. I was in a meeting recently where some people were discussing whether to have a certain really ornery and, and mentally ill, uh, elements of mental illness in, in the person's life, person should we let them in should we let them hang out in the meeting because they start making noise and carrying on and and it's one thing if they're if they're willing to cool it a little bit during a meeting and another thing when they're it's there's no way they're going to start screaming and arguing and getting in your face and it becomes a scene and this happened so much over months and months time with the person my set my my comment to everyone was there's a time to send somebody packing, but it would be better for us to err on grace and knowing that w that's what we, God disagrees with us every day and he, and he loves us. <laughs> so there, I mean, really think about that. There's no, because now we, we have in part, I have in part, we have in part partial. So this issue of encouragement, that's in the nature of God. And what I told everybody was, 
I, I wouldn't be completely against saying, hey, when she comes, maybe a, a couple of folks or one of the sisters that you, you all know her, you know, step out, step out of the room with her, talk to her, encourage, listen to her, you know, try to try to be gracious and, and kind, even be, even when they're obnoxious, rude, loud, and, you know, <laughs> going to blow the meeting apart, right? right? I mean, there's a point where you want order and sense, but I just think that sense of compassion, and what I said to everyone was, he, God is perfect in all his ways, but he's incredibly patient, mm. incredibly merciful and forgiving and kind. Mm -hmm. He won't, the spirit of the Lord won't always strive with people. There is a limit to his patience. There is anger in the, in the mind and heart of God. There is judgment. We, we can't blow the scriptures out that deal with all that. They deal with it in the New Testament, not just the Old. Sure. If there is, a, what I said is, there's no slant. There's no, there's no disparaging between God's mercy and grace and his judgment. It's perfect, okay? Mm -hmm. But I would say it this way, humanly speaking, if there's any kind of a slant or an angle at all in the nature of God himself, it's, it's to grace. It's for grace. It's, you know, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I would have, I would have gathered you as a hen gathered, gathers the chicks under his wings, you know, but you would not. Right. So there is that sense of whether we're willing to receive encouragement and grace and mercy. But for Christians, man, if we're going to blow it, let's blow it in loving and, and yeah. grace and forgiveness. Yeah. Let's, let's swing the pendulum over there. And Glenn, you had no idea of this, of course. But what you just spoke on just speaks to uh, me personally. And I'm in Tennessee now, but I came out of a, a community in Sarasota, 12 Springs. And a large contingency of our people didn't have a home. Man, this exact situation was occurring. A, a young lady would come in and sure. uh, due to her uh, journey that she was on and issues she was dealing with, there would be some uh, vocalization uh, because of the mental illness mental health issues that she was dealing with. And we had this conversation, man. And that's where we rested at too. Right to the point where you said, if it was occurring, we need a young lady to sit beside her, take her, hey, why don't we step outside for a second? So that's uh, greatly encouraging for us that again, if you are uh, gonna err, let's do so on the side of making sure that you know you're welcomed here. That's and it. You know, then if certain steps are taken, we'll take those steps at that time, but not instead of, well, you're no longer welcomed here. Oh, of course you are. But let's take these steps to make sure that the meeting can go in, in order. Boom. Yeah. So what was the time and place, Glenn, as we're talking about the power of encouragement here? Can you look back on your life? I'm sure there are perhaps more than one. But well, one that you'd like to take a moment on and say, man, this encouragement that was brought to me, it, it made a difference in my life. Well, um, I suppose there was a situation where I was in Bible school um, and I was doing a term paper. And the term paper was due. I knew it was due. I was always a lousy student. Right? Uh, I, I, I'm pretty convinced they, they gave me my high school diploma just to get me out of there, you know. And here it is several months later, and I'm finally really following walking with the Lord. Eh? And it's only been a few months that I'm serious and I'm in the school and here it is. And I, I knew the paper was due and I didn't get it done in time. And it was just procrastinating and 50 other things and whatever. But when the day came and the class met and the director or the leader of the prof teacher of the classes, okay, time to turn in the papers. I'm like, uh, and I was so guilty. And he wasn't putting it off. Well, he wasn't putting that on me, and nobody else was. You know, I, I was irresponsible. I, I, I should have pitched in, and I didn't. And so the punchline is, I rarely cried. Mm. Very rarely, uh, Anthony. But I broke down. I mean, lost it. And I couldn't stop. And the class dismissed. And I went up and I said, I, I'm so sorry. I, or actually, I don't think I even approached him at that point. And as I'm trying to walk down the spiral stairs to lunch, I, did, I got to the bottom floor and I, I mean, I was crying so hard I couldn't see. 
and I couldn't stop. I, I was just so condemned and guilty and, and I'd blown it. I had. And a couple of the leadership team saw me and one of them said, what's up, Glenn? And I, I said, oh, oh, and I couldn't hardly said, come on in, come on, in. step into the office, shut the door. And I think there were three, three of them there. And, and I spilled it all out. And they said, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. You know, Paul right there uh, in Romans. And, and, and Paul, I'm sorry, Glenn, if I can just interrupt quickly, because that scripture right there, and there was one word that you didn't throw in that is just everything for that. Now. When? Now, now. there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Beautiful. And, and so, and, you know, look, okay, you blew it. All right. Go back to the teacher. Let them know. Your instructor is going to be cool. Trust me. He's, he's a good man. It's not an issue. He'll, he'll give you an extension, you know, a day or two, three, whatever. Then do the paper and let it roll. And don't freak out about the grade you get either. You know, just let it go. We prayed together and I finally settled down and stopped losing it. Right. Sure enough, that's what happened. And I did. I wish I had that term paper. I'd probably laugh at it. Uh, now I'm at the content of it all, but I really worked hard on it and I, I turned it in. We beat ourselves up when we shouldn't. And we often exonerate ourselves when we need to repent, <laughs> confess and repent and be accountable. And, and of course we need all of us. And I, look, I've been a pastor most of my life now. And, and I have brothers that I'm in relationship with pastorally voluntarily voluntarily there's no lording it over any of that and these are people that i actually live with in intentional christian community here at jesus people in chicago uh, i've lived most of my life uh in community since since i was 18 um and to have people that you can talk to and pray with for encouragement Man. who who will not cut you slack on on clear violation of scripture, straight up sin. I don't mean what the church calls sin, what, what scripture, what God clearly contextually refers to as missing the mark is wrong. Right. But to have people that can talk with you, pray with you, walk with you. Hey, I'm not going anywhere. I'm here. I'm here for you. I'm not against you. Isn't that the very heart and, and mind and word of God? I, right. I'm for you. I'm for you. Why do you... Paul, Saul, before you, why do you kick against the pricks? What, you know, I got to knock you off your horse to get your attention, but, <laughs> but it's not, it's, I take, God says in his word, he takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. How much less does he take mm -hmm. pleasure when his own sons and daughters who are really trying to follow him, blow it. We can come back. There is grace to help in yes. time of need. There is mercy. It's not well, there's no such thing as sin, you know, Ali, Ali, oxen free. Every, everything was beautiful in its own way, you know, whatever. Let's get the campfire no, 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 and no. sing Kumbaya. No, 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 no. Put the, put the marshmallows <laughs> away. Time, time for the nails. It's time to deal with the real, the real cross and the real sin in our life too. But, 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 but there's that mercy. So the other thing yes. is a scripture had hit me very hard. And it's really uh, Paul's writing in context of the Corinthian church about an mm -hmm. offering given. And, and the, you know, hey, the sense of what he's saying is if you feel bad that you can't give much or you feel like you really don't have much to give at all. He said, if there first be a willingness or a willing heart or a willing mind, it is accepted according to what one has, mm -hmm. not according to what they have that's not, right, what they right. don't have. And it's the concept of, say, Jesus, when he talks about the widow's might. Well, she didn't have much, but she gave. She, her concept, her focus was on the Lord and on, and on the people of God and meeting the need. And so, you know, it's accepted. You, some people continually beat themselves up. Mm -hmm. I'll never amount to, I mean, I'm a chaplain. A lot of what I do is in Cook County Jail and, um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm accredited, I'm accredited down at, uh, uh, Stateville and I've been in many prisons throughout 
Illinois, Ohio, Alaska, and even overseas, a number of countries overseas. I do a lot of concerts mm. and services for incarcerated people. Some of those folks are the most beaten down, hurting people ever. When you, if you really get to know people and you find out their story, and, and even mm. if you get, throw away their, their perspectives that aren't necessarily the reality, if you, if you put aside the people that are just on the moment, in the moment, conning you, playing a little game, if you really get down to it, a lot of people feel like they're worthless they are without value. They are obviously the rubbish and the garbage of the world. I see this all the time. I see it in the white folks, but I see it constantly in people of color, black folks, um, uh, Hispanic people, uh, Native American people. You know, they're what we are what you say we are. We're useless. Yeah. Uh, we don't have any real value. We, um, uh, we don't have not earned opportunity and that little grace, grace, unmerited, unmerited favor to my Christian brothers and sisters who are constantly demanding people earn your grace and mercy. <coughs> work that out. That's hypocrisy. Yes, sir. That That's is right. flat out hypocrisy. So, yes, so I want to be more encouraging than challenging, but unfortunately <laughs> you asked Glenn on this yep. show, not somebody else. So, mm. you know, the problem is, is that, that, that hypocrisy, that dichotomy, that, how can he be? Well, because, because it's of the, the Lord's mercies that were not consumed. Yeah. And some of these folks absolutely broke laws, mm -hmm. murdered people. I mean, I'm, I'm on death row at times in, in Ohio, many times down there with a chaplain friend of mine. We tour all over the state and ma mostly max security. And, and these are, you know, it's like we are the dregs. We are the forgotten. You know, we, we were reaping what we've sown, and that's all we're ever going to reap. Yeah, well, I I see a whole lot of other stuff in Scripture. Like, if they're first be willing mind, it's a, you're, God can... Do we really believe in redemption? I wrote a yeah. blog about redemption recently and questioned whether a lot of Christians even believe in it, because we don't talk in terms of forgiveness, mercy, gathering in, community, uh, concepts of, of love, it's beat down. It's, you know, it's beat down. And trust me, I'm an old holiness preacher. I could, sometimes people <laughs> can, no, really, over years with Resurrection Band and, and GKB, my solo gigs, even just preaching in churches, I've mm -hmm. had people go, do you believe in salvation by works? Because you're hammering away at the Lordship of Christ to the point of like, a whoa. And I'm like, absolutely not. But we can't take God like he's a smorgasbord Right. And I'll take this, and I don't know none for me today. And we do that with, we chop him up like, okay, he's master, king, lord, and absolute has dominion. But that doesn't fit my circumstances today, though. <laughs> and we have a habit, don't we, Glenn, of bringing in the Jesus that we need for that moment or for those, for those set of circumstances. You just uh, nailed it. Glenn, you talked about a lot of ethnicity with humans by the way of how we process our, our self-image. And there's no doubt, man, with the history of this country that it's going to be heavier on some than others. But at the same time, that, that human nature is, is there by way of how we have an image of ourselves. As, uh, as a pastor at Japuza Inner City, um, how are you seeing people being mindful of the power of encouragement uh, one to another across racial uh, divisions, different social backgrounds and economic backgrounds? As a pastor, man, what are you seeing in this hour, Glenn, by way of followers of Christ, the redeemed, encouraging uh, one another? Well, by love encourage one another. I mean, this is this whole show, everything you're doing here is about living that, that out. And, and that's not an option. That's not a, you know, maybe we ought to think about this. Well, we'll, we'll have a board meeting and consider it and vote, vote on it. I mean, this, the, the, the spirit of God is the comforter. How do we do that? How do we encourage? Well, we comfort. How do we comfort? I'll tell you, Unfortunately, because I'm, I'm a man of many words, and Proverbs warns us about that, by the way. 
and I'm a preacher. It's part of the gifts and call. And I so much want people to get what I'm saying that I tend to overspeak, like many preachers, communicators, speakers. The glory of doing music and lyrics is that you have to edit yourself down and be quite a bit more succinct. That's, right. That's wonderful. That probably saves a lot of people a lot of misery hanging around me. <laughs> but I can even I can tell you. I think the first the first answer to your question is listening. It's not talking. It's not giving advice. It's not even quoting scripture. Mm -hmm. And if you want to quote scripture, how about this one? Hear, O Israel, mm -hmm. the people of God, hear, mm -hmm. the Father says to us, O Israel, hear. Now, back in, that's Jesus quoting, you know, the first and second most important commandments according to him. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, the Lord your God is one, and so forth. You shall love God supremely, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, back in uh, Psalms. I should really memorize this reference reference because I quote it a lot. Mm. It's like a towel being wrung out inside of the, uh, you know, the, the, the Lord God is saying, oh, if my people would mm. listen to me and if we would learn to listen to people around us. One of the things we've been doing is, and I didn't start this, uh, a number of folks in the community, we have a huge 10 story building and we're right in a, two gang area and they vie for turf and blah, blah, blah. And we do, we have a little, little under a 400 bed homeless shelter, uh, three blocks from, from us and uh, a fair trade open. It's literally called everybody's coffee. It's a coffee shop. And we do all these things, right? Church services and blah, blah, blah. But somebody said, why don't we start bringing folding chairs out front on the sidewalk, pop them up against the building and just, interact and chat with our neighbors. I mean, they all know us. We've been going under the bridge to work with homeless folks right. three blocks away. And, right. you know, we do all these things. We've been doing this for decades, yes, literally, yep. uh, since about 73 in Chicago, in the inner city. But how about with all of the Black Lives Matters and no, all lives matter and da 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 How about we get out into the street and have conversations with people you just lost about 20,000 viewers. Um, how, about, <laughs> how about we just greet people That's and beautiful. interact? That's and they, and they want to have a conversation, cool. And we're not going to push it. They all know Jesus people live here. They all know all mm -hmm. the stuff. We have 90 to 100 low-income seniors that we work with and serve on the top three floors. We do all sorts of stuff. Sure. Most of the people know it. So I'm getting to know the gangbangers and the dealers by name. Now, I've started to, me, I'll bring out a, last night I had a ukulele with a pickup in it, and I bring out a little amp, uh, then, or I'll bring out an electric guitar, or a slide, or a cigar box guitar, or harmonica, and I'll just play a little music, and s smile, and say hey to people, and people stop and listen, and we have, interact and have conversation. One of the brothers has, uh, every night, brings out two dog dishes full of water and separates them because sometimes dogs don't like each other, right? People walk their dogs, come through. Sure. So we're interacting with whoever. And there's all these folks in the street. We wave at the cops and the detectives. We oh. count how many of those cars go by every night. That's one of the things we kind of do. <laughs> and I mean, I know godly cops and I know absolute demonized jerks that have badges, right? So just like in the church, right? There's people that love just Jesus. Like, just like that, everywhere, man. Yes, you know, welcome to the wide world. So right. building bridges starts with listening. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that means you have to be there. You have to attend. I've often said the first words in discipleship are show up. Uh, that, that's not biblical, but it's biblical, right? And so being a presence and listening and interacting and inviting as opposed to force-feeding information. That's right. Anybody can stand out with their gospel gun and you know, I, I'll never forget years ago during Mardi Gras, we would go down many, many years. Resurrection Band would set up and play. We, we were the only Christian band in a, in a rock festival in Jackson Square. They stopped doing those. And um, we found ourselves in pretty interesting situations because there would be other Christian groups. And I'll never forget one had a sign. It would have probably been about how many yards 
it would have been about 12 or 16 yards wide and about five yards high. It was black background, red flames shooting up, and in big white letters, block letters, it said, you're going to hell. So this, the idea of these folks was to carry that sign with a bullhorn screaming over thousands of people who are, yeah, they're taking their clothes off and, you know, every kind of sexuality and blah, blah, blah. Everybody's getting high, snorting coke, getting drunk, doing all that. Yeah, that's what they're pagans. What do pagans do? What did I do back then, right, before I came to follow Jesus? Same thing. And here we are trying to share the gospel. And, and you're, you're just like, this is insane. This is, this is crazy. <laughs> Yeah. Who, encur- who, is, who is encouraged to actually repent when you're screaming at them and everything? And, of course, you know, the, the classic suits, string ties, buzz cuts, and this chip on the shoulder. Have you heard the good news? You're going to hell. <laughs> you know, it's like, wow. Right. <laughs> oh, now, now I, don't, I don't deny what Jesus says about judgment. I'm not a universalist. Uh, if you don't know what that means and you're watching this, we can, you can study mm-hmm. that. I don't think everybody's going to be with the Lord for eternity. Uh, I don't think that's what Jesus said ever. But I do believe that there's an attitude that we come with. And as my sweet Southern from the South originally wife, Wendy says, <laughs> honey, you can always draw more flies with honey than with vinegar. And, and you know, you can, you can, She'll say, you can uh, shear the sheep regularly, but you can only skin them once. Mm. And some of us as Christians, instead of being encouraging, yeah. we just want to win. We want to one-up them. Yes. We want to beat down. That, that power to be right is a power that corrupts. Hello. And like you say, Glenn, if we can allow that mercy and grace to come in and kick that right to be right out. That, that's such a powerful scripture. And I know I get it backwards sometimes. And I need to be quick to speak and slow to listen. Oh, 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 oh wait. He, oh. he reversed it, didn't he? Slow you mean the, you mean slow the anger, to speak. You mean the anger of man doesn't, doesn't work the righteousness of God? Well, yeah. And and when we're, you know, the very thing that you're talking about, Glenn, when we're in a hang, when we're in a space with people, to be able to just talk, to just reflect and and listen, I'm learning that, man, that opens some doors so much more, so much more so than any type of preaching or, uh, or scriptural exhortation, and as you say, that has its place, but as opposed to listening to their story, let them speak. It just seems like that bond of trust, it, it occurs a little bit more rapidly than, than if I'm babbling on, you know. <laughs> I had a guy one time in the street who apparently, I don't know if he was a preacher's kid or what, but a very intelligent uh, guy. And we're sharing the gospel in the street, just sharing what Jesus had done in our lives and talking with people at random. And uh, I said, I probably said, hey, Jesus loves you, bro. And he stopped. He said, really? And we had this conversation for a minute. He was definitely, you know, he had an attitude and uh, he wasn't in, in any way agreeing. Mm-hmm. And at one point he, he asked me, he said, let me ask you a question. And he apparently knew the scripture pretty well. And he, I could pick that up right from the conversation. He goes, he asked me some esoteric cosmic theological, how many angels can dance on the head of a pen? <laughs> prove it, prove it, you know, right. sort of that sort of thing. I don't sure. even remember what it was. And I said, Okay, give me a second. Now, by this time, I'd spent a lot of time in Scripture, and I had pretty good working knowledge of Scripture on most issues, or I thought I did anyway. And it took me about 20 seconds to sort through Scripture in my head. That, and I said, you know, I know the Word of God, the Bible, pretty well, but I don't think the scripture specifically answers that question in a direct way. And, and so my answer to you is, I don't know. Oh, beautiful. And this guy looks at me and goes, this guy, this guy looks at me and goes, just like that. And I went, I went, I mimicked back at him. What's that? What's that about? 
he goes, I've asked that question of an awful lot of Christians and you're the first guy that ever admitted he didn't have an answer right. or, or misquote some verse that had right. nothing to right. do with it. Totally out of context of the right. issue. He looked at me, he goes, walk with me a ways. Love it. That, that earned a measure of, okay, we're going to, we talk a little further. And basically what I shared was what we Christians call our testimony. I Look, all the philosophical, theological, doctrinal, and methodological questions, how we got our Bible, blah, mm-hmm. blah. We can go on forever, right? But the punchline to this is my life got, I wouldn't be alive. So, you know, I was an addict. I, you know, I should have died on several occasions. And I got to tell you, by the the mercy of God in Jesus Christ. I'm alive today. And that's why I'm talking to you. That's I got to tell you, if my, I could, I could not quit the sexual and alcohol and drug addictions or even the music junkie. I was, Mm -hmm. you know, the sonic idol, you know, the, my whole identity is wrapped up in what I do. The prophet of the phonograph needle. Oh, and, uh, this is a song, the next album that's coming out, the next album that's coming out, which will be dropping, I don't know when this is going to be aired, but it's called Swamp Gas Matthias. Um, it's pretty in your face, and it deals with a lot of what we've been talking about. The album after that, which I've recorded all my parts on, is called Ain't No Bars, and in parentheses around my heart. And it's actually written, anybody will listen to it and they will or won't relate to the blues. Uh, And that album is almost all blues, uh, very blues based. Well, it actually pretty much all, it is. Swamp Cats Messiahs is Americana with some blues and other things going on in it. Uh, It's a protest album. But this this second album features uh, a lot of this guitar and a bunch of other single string diddly bows and blah, blah, blah. And it's essentially a worship project, but it's blues worship. So the lyrics are vertical. And I wrote every song in the mind of if I'm sitting behind bars, what do I need to hear? Mm. If I'm sitting there for 20 years, life or on death row, what do I need to hear? And um, so they'll both be out on Gur Records. But anyway, this is one of them. And I, this is a song that needed to be written. And, and I, I do a lot of this kind of thing when I go into prisons and jails. It's called With All My Heart or All My Heart. With all my heart, all my soul, with all my mind, all my strength, with all my heart, all my soul, with all my mind, all my strength. I want to love you, precious Lord. I want to praise you, King of Kings. I want to love you, precious Lord. I want to praise you, King of Kings. With all my heart, all my soul, with all my mind, all my strength, with all my heart, all my soul, with all my mind, all my strength. Thank you, Lord, for loving me, for the grace that set me free. Thank you for forgiveness, too. I just want to follow you. With all my heart, all my soul, with all my mind, and all my strength, with all my heart, all my soul, with all my mind, all my strength. With all my heart, all my soul, with all my mind, all my strength, with all my heart, all my soul, with 
all my mind, all my strength. Glenn Kaiser, pastor at Japuza, inner city Chai Town here in the good old U.S. of A. And simply put, a blues man with a heart for Jesus. Glenn, thank you for your fellowship and uh, your heart to encourage us today. Take us out with just an encouraging word uh, for our listeners today, please, sir. Well, I would say this. One, you're welcome. And two, there is a real devil. There's a real adversary. There are real fallen angels. But I memorized in my first months of walking with Jesus, Luke 10, 19, if powerful. For I've given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And of course, is there pain in the world? Well, Jesus said, if they hated me, they'll hate you. Now, that's not encouraging, is it? Uh, in the world, you shall have tribulation. We want to camp on the second half of that verse, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. We should camp on the second half, but we should never deny lament. We should never deny the biggest category of lyrics in the book of Psalms. It's why I play blues music, big part of it. The real world we live in, is now through a glass darkly and then face to face. Meanwhile, God has given us all the job to love one another and to love him supremely. And that's going to cost us some days. Be encouraged. Be of good cheer. He's overcome the world. And he says, because I live, you shall live also. Thank you for joining us in an encouraging conversation with Glenn Kaiser. Peace and grace to you and your home today.